What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lotus Asakura, the one who never knows best, bringing you some more Dragon Ball Fighters and bringing you post commentary coverage of a recent NLBC Dragon Ball Fighters online tournament run. If you heard that little sound effect there, that was me finishing rendering a video. Pay that no attention. But anyway, um, so yeah, this run actually took place almost two weeks ago, I want to say. I, If I remember correct, this was about two weeks ago. This was before, yeah, because this was before I left for vacation. So this was pretty much like two weeks ago. This was the last event I entered before then. Also, today's Wednesday. Is there, is there a calm today? I want to enter calm. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, okay, I digress. Point is, um, so yeah, I entered NLBC playing the team Vegeta Trunks in 21. That is like, you know, my my, my top tier competitive team. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Whoa. As top tier as a team with Trunks and B, but when you're playing Vegeta in 21, I mean, both these characters are arguably two of the best in the game. Well, they're, they're, they are they are two of the best in the game. 21, arguably the best. Uh, well, there's a new 21 in town who everyone's saying is the best character in the game, and it's, it's kind of hard to disagree with that, uh, considering what we've seen so far, but I think uh, time will still uh, have to be able to tell on, on that one because uh, she's, she's got a lot of strong tools, but she's not officially out yet. Well, actually, she is officially out for some people right now. By the time you're seeing this video, she's out on Xbox for certain players in certain regions or whatever. I don't really know fully how it works but yeah some people already have access to her i've seen a couple of people post some clips and stuff on twitter uh but i won't be able to play her until tomorrow but i'm looking forward to it i'm very excited that being said you can see our first opponent here in round one of nlbc was a player named mr anderson winning team of ui goku cooler and janamba and these are all problem characters for me you can see we got off to a very good start we even managed to punish the uh the risk that he took with ui goku early on and actually killed the character but ui goku is obviously ui goku i mean we all struggled against that character most of us still do myself included hate him with all my heart fuck that whack ass character <laughs> it is what it is janemba and ui or janemba and cooler janemba is pretty strong but I, I don't know if i necessarily consider him top tier but he's, he's definitely a very powerful character and somebody you don't want to take lightly he's also not super common and he's a bit weird and cooler even more so he's even less common and you, you really don't come across that many cooler players, and especially not that, ma that many good cooler players. So, you guys have seen me before, whenever I do fight strong Janemba players, I tend to struggle a bit, because that character is not somebody um, I, I, I have a lot of experience fighting, and I kind of get caught slipping. And the same thing goes with Cooler. Uh, when I play against Kaysak, whenever I play against Obelisk, Cooler is a character that gives me a lot of trouble. And you can see Cooler is actually giving me the hands, I wasted my sparking, that's off the table, he's activated his, and my trunks is dead, and he's even things up rather quickly. So, this team in particular, I don't know what the synergy is like, I don't know if it is necessarily a strong team, but all three of these characters are characters that give me, personally, as a player, a lot of issues. Now, I do have the strength of Vegeta in 21 on my side, but the important thing to remember about these characters is that, uh, I'm trash, so <laughs> they can only carry a garbage player like me, but so far. But anyway, you see we get the tag, oh, I'm just thing up, it's fine. I wanted Super Dash there, and I hesitated for a long time, even though it looked like he was waiting for it, and then of course when I finally did do it, he tossed up the 3 agent and he counters me. But, um, yeah, you see, I'm not doing a very good job with my Key Blast placement, and he's actually counting me with his Key Blast a lot, baits me there, but doesn't punish it in time, we block the 6M, Rocky Cat in the corner, called 21 at the wrong time, he DP'd there, I don't know if that was on reaction or just randomly, it's, it's kind of hard to say it was so close that I, I, I don't want to believe your Fenrich, especially online And this is on PlayStation at that and even on PC So it's like I have a hard time believing no combo off the 6M that I managed to beat my raw tag And you know what? I'm gonna take a second to slow down and find my water bottle because the boy's talking a mile a minute That's okay <clears throat> And uh, y'all know how I get really into these matches sometimes and I start talking way too fast So let me go ahead and take a swig of the old Fiji Yeah, he takes out my Android 21, and now it's my base Vegeta versus Janemba and Cooler. This is definitely a winnable match. I've got plenty of meter. If I get hit one good time, uh, he's got plenty of bar in order to kill me. Uh, but it's still doable. I find the hit on Janemba. Manage to get to level 3. We do get mix here. Do I actually manage to mix him up properly? Not really. Um, DP assist is also very powerful, and what's even more powerful, well, what's also very powerful, I should say, is Janemba's command grab. I feel like Janemba as a, I don't want to call him a grappler, but for all intents and purposes, Janemba as a grappler is pretty underrated. I feel like his light command grab is really good. Uh, it's pretty quick, and it's um, it's not like a super obvious one, I feel like. I don't know, maybe, 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 maybe I'm, I'm tripping on that, but I feel like his command grabs are like really, really strong, and I don't feel like it comes into play too often a lot of times when I'm watching Janemba players, but it's something I feel like players should be using more. Uh, with that character. Then again, I say that, but again, there's not good 2H on the Super Dash. There's not that many Janemba players who would take note of. In fact, when I think of it, what are some like high-level players that actually are using Janemba these days? The first one that comes to mind is obviously Shanks. He's running Cell-based Vegeta and Janemba these days. But other than him, uh, is anybody like a Janemba main? Uh, I know Hook practiced a lot with Janemba, but doesn't really play him in tournament. Uh, there's got to be a couple of French players. I know Kaiden was playing a lot of Janemba at one point. Um, 
I know there's got to be a couple more Janemba players that are, that are escaping me right now. I mean, Alucard plays Janemba. I was thinking of the players that are a bit beyond his level, but there's, there's somebody else I feel like I'm forgetting. But once again, we take out the UI Goku pretty quickly. UI Goku is actually not much of a factor uh, in these games, as you can see. Uh, he died pretty quickly in game one. I feel like he died even faster in game two. And we have our 21 on point with Vegeta and Trunks behind her. And uh, this should be, you know, what I should be doing here is playing a bit more lame, but I, I, I'm not really good at the lame play style. And this is something I've been like, like thinking about a lot lately because I feel like as a player, I don't do very well at playing with a lead, right? I've been trying to um, practice being more patient and less aggressive when I have the lead and allow my opponent to come to me and make more mistakes. But that is a play style I'm not very good at. And so I'm in this space right now where it's like, okay, do I need to keep doing that and just improve on my ability to play lame and allow my opponents to make more mistakes? Or is that just not my play style and I just need to be more aggressive? But either way, it's like, it, it feels like when I'm when I'm too aggressive, right? Obviously I end up making the mistakes and I get punished for it and I lose my lead. Or I play a play style that I'm not really accustomed to or that great at and end up throwing the lead either way. So it's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the balance or like which path I should really take, which one's more my style, which one's the, the better one for me to go with. And something I haven't quite figured out yet. Anyway, back to the match. We've lost our Android 21. I messed up my mix-up. Cooler sparks anyway after blocking the mid. And yeah, I don't really know what he was trying to do there, but finds a hit with the key blast. Empty vanish for the confirm. Good stuff. And he drops the combo. I raw tag in the trunks, managed to not get punished. 3H is such a stupid button. I still feel like Cooler. I wouldn't say, well, I used there was a point in time where I feel like Cooler was like one of the most underrated characters in the game. Also, this is not the combo I should have done, but it's fine. We cleaned it up well enough. Um actually, do I still get my slider knocked out? Yeah, no, too, too much hit stun. Punish there. There was a point in time, but this was like well over a year ago at this point, where I thought Cooler was one of the most underrated characters, and I don't think Cooler is anything special, especially now, because he's been power crept so much by so many other characters either being released or being released with um or being buffed with really stupid tools. <laughs> or I should say well, no, some of them are stupid. Like Vegito 5 is stupid. I'm always gonna find a way to talk shit about Vegito 5 in the video, aren't I? Uh, or just really powerful tools in general, like, you know, Janemba's EX Slash being buffed with his J2H, or like Jiren J2H, or what else is like a really powerful tool another character has gotten? Um, uh, I don't know, when Gogeta got the ability to do his, uh, his beam into full screen EX Rekka, or all the different changes Android 17 has gotten, or, you know, just the release of characters like Gogeta, or like, uh, you know, Android 21 about to be released. You know, Cooler is a character that was never like top tier, I thought was solid, even though he was underplayed, but it's just fallen further and further as, as the power creep continues to be introduced in this game. Anyway, that being said, speaking of falling further and further, you can see Janemba and Cooler. I mean, it's the Janemba and Cooler show, man. They were really giving us the hands. They were really giving us the hands. And I'm fighting for my life right now with this solo base Vegeta. Just not able to find the hit right now. Managed to snipe the DPS with the Key Blast. No punish on the whiff Hellgate. Not the Hellgate. I always call it the Hellgate. No, the Hellgate's the orb, right? Either way, I don't I don't remember. The counter. We'll just call it the counter. We find the hit on Janemba, though. Get the loops. I did the wrong combo. It's fine. We still get the kill. But that was like one of those such situations where... I like kind of blanked for a moment and yeah okay we find the hit on Janemba take him down we just need one hit on cooler we can finish the job I've got two bars and I get hit with the key blast he drops the combo though second chance of life and another key blast and I end up going down 2-0 to Mr. Anderson and it was it was really because of cooler I feel like cooler was the main reason why obviously Janemba played a factor as well uh caught me with a couple of command grabs obviously both Janemba assist and cooler assist are very powerful I struggle against both of those assists as well um, I've mentioned time and time again how I struggle against Janemba A and Super Saiyan Vegeta A, and I feel like Janemba A is just a better version of Super Saiyan Vegeta A. Um, and it's funny too, because that's an assist I always thought was good, and a lot of people didn't, and then they buffed it. Same thing goes with Vegito A assist. I always thought Vegito A assist was good, and then they buffed it, now it's broken. Broken, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's super powerful. But we lost our very first match. <clears throat> it's not too often that that happens to me. I, I can't think of another time where it has ever happened to me, where I lost my very first round in an event, but... It, it, it be like that when it be like that especially when it be like that but the story does not end here obviously we still are in the tournament in the loser side of the bracket so i'll be back with the next match and we you know we'll, we'll show you how far i make it in the losers run so let's get a pop and then wouldn't you know it our very next opponent is another janemba player this time with blue goku on point and gotenks anchor and it's interesting to see gotenks anchor with the galactic donuts assist uh because i feel like typically um, you play Gotenks on point, right? And obviously we're in a state of the game where you can play any combination of characters in any order you want with any assist you want. You can probably make it work. The game's really... <sighs> you know, it's funny. I feel like this is the most... How do I explain? This might be the most balanced the game has ever been. 
<clears throat> but the thing people don't seem to understand about balance, and also I delayed that rocky way too much, I was able to sa save myself, but he didn't commit to the 2H. Um, the thing people don't understand about balance is that even if a game is balanced, it doesn't matter because in the competitive scene and for the tryhard sweaty sweats online, people are always going to gravitate to what, towards whatever is the strongest. Like, if characters are deemed to be top tier or stronger than others, those are going to be the most popular characters in the game, right? Even though this season allows for the most variety and the most diversity, we still see these same characters all the time. It's no different than seasons one, two, or the, the first version of season three, where there's always characters you see the most. In season one, you saw Bardock 16 everywhere, a lot of Cell, Kid Buu, you know what I'm saying? And it, pretty much Bardock was on every single team, right? Season two, obviously, it was the GT Goku show. GT Goku was on pretty much every single team. Bardock's still very popular. You see a lot of Team Gohan. Um, and in season three, right? Well, you, you, you had you've had a couple of different like versions of season three, a couple of different patches or whatever. But like right now in season three, I feel like honestly it might. I could just be biased, and it could just be recency bias for sure. But it feels like I see the least amount of variety, at least online, right? Because I don't know. I I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I, don't, I don't know if I can confidently say that. Well, clearly I can't confidently say that, but. Season 3 is no different, or this version of the game is no different where you see UI Goku, Vegito, Gogeta, everywhere, right? You see a lot of people copying Yasha's team as well with the Android 17, but the blue hairs and the fusions, they're, they are the most popular and common characters by far. And obviously this team that I'm finding right now is, is a bit more unorthodox. You don't see a lot of Janemba or Gotenks, which is weird to me. The Gotenks one is still really weird to me because I still feel like Gotenks is top tier, but I guess I'm one of the few people who think that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um... But, but yeah, this is the point that I want to make. It's like no matter, no matter how diverse the game can be or how balanced it is, people are always going to gravitate towards whatever's strong, whatever's top tier. Especially in the competitive scene, you obviously are going to have people who are character loyalists or people who want to play a certain character that they like, or people who don't find whatever particular top tier at that time fun, and they're going to try to find, you know, uh, they're going to try to find a way to make the game work um, for them. But it's it's this is the way it's always going to be so like when i discuss or express my issues or like my gripes with the game or the current state or the balance or whatever it's not really ever about diversity or variety of course seeing it is great and there's characters that i would love to see more of obviously like trunks for example when i was gonna play him because he fucking sucks i think trunks is bottom five in this game right now but it is what it is <laughs> anyway um the variety is not necessarily what I have an issue with. Does it get stale or boring seeing the same characters all the time? Sure, but that's always going to be the case. And that's something that I know and that I accept as a fighting game player. And it's not, like I said, it's not even just this game. It's every fighting game, right? Whatever fighting game, I, yeah, I, I blanked on the combo. I was supposed to do that for a second. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. In every fighting game, the top tiers are always going to be prevalent. So, um, it is what it is. It is what it is. That being said, I talked almost not not at all. I pretty much didn't talk about that match at all, but it's fine. I made my point. We rambled on, but you guys know how it is sometimes with this post commentary. I do get into these tangents. That being said, we take game number one over Optimus Crime, and, uh, you know, he has a bit of a reckless play style. He plays really fast, too. I feel like a lot of players play a lot faster than they really should be, and I know I'm one to talk at times because sometimes I can play a little bit too fast, too, to the point where I have a command in my Twitch chat. Uh, that's just Nightbot telling you to slow down, stupid, every so often. Uh, which, by the way, if you don't follow the streams, you definitely should. Link is always in the description down below at twitch.tv slash Cora. And by the way, last night, we actually started my first ever playthrough of The World Ends With You, which is a game that I wanted to play for some time and never actually had the chance to check out. But I'm finally playing it, and it's pretty fun. Really great music in that as well. So if that interests you at all, be sure to check out the stream. I'll be playing it a bit more um, until I complete it, the playthrough. It's, apparently, the game takes roughly to 20 to 30 hours. I'm about three hours in, so we've still got a few more streams to knock out with that. Also, that was a terrible combo, though, so what the hell are you doing? Um, I definitely could have killed here, but I'm an idiot. So at least we get the cornerback in the sliding knockdown. But, um, yeah, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, I, I feel like a lot of players, they play so fast, uh, and they, it, it makes them really sloppy. And a lot of players are just playing on complete autopilot without ever taking into consideration what decisions or moves their opponent is making and just trying to force their own will and game plan, even if it's not one that's working. You know what I mean? I feel like this is a player who was succumbing to that where it's like in his in his head, it's already like he already has like a, a predisposition. Is, is that what I want to say? What he's what he's going to do is already planned out in his head. It's not something like he's thinking about. It's just like this is what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? And I feel like I see a lot of players like that. And it felt like that's what this player was doing, especially in game number one. I didn't manage to get the rejump there off the JH, but it's fine. Um, jump out of the command grab, super dash, command grab, ex dive, that should be a dead Janemba. And um, yeah, I, mean, I love Android 21. I actually cannot wait to play 21 Trunks 21. I think the team that I'm 
most likely going to be playing and experimenting a lot with in order to, to, to get a feel for Lab Coat 21 is Lab Coat 21 on point, Trunks at mid, and then Anchor Android 21, or maybe 21 21 Trunks because I talked about this before. I don't actually remember what my team order was in these videos because like, I don't remember if I had made this decision before or after these recordings, this gameplay, but um, I let him dash and I messed up my Oki. That's not supposed to work, but I messed up my meaty. Um, I've actually started playing Trunks on Anchor again with his team, and not necessarily because I'm, I want him Anchor, or what I should say is I'm putting him in the third slot, in the third spot, and I don't remember if I explained this in the video or not already, but... So, I feel that Trunks is best as a... <laughs> as a mid character, right? I feel like his best spot on a team is mid, right? However, the reason for that is because I feel like he's a character that does a lot better when he has a bunch of uh, bar to spend, right? Obviously, with the EX flips and the EX shining slash, he needs a bunch of meter. And with even trying to get his level 3 mid screen, you need a lot of bar, right? So I put him mid because he's not necessarily the best character at building. He's not awful at building meter, but he's not Angry 17 or Team Gohan, you know what I mean? And um, the thing is, though, right? If I have a match where I'm playing base Vegeta, let's say, and Vegeta dies right away or he dies after I spent my meter and Trunks gets pulled in, or I like, you know, Trunks comes in and I have zero bars or maybe only like a single bar of meter I feel like I'm better off having Android 21 in as opposed to uh, Trunks right so I'm not necessarily playing Trunks as a that was definitely me trying to disrespect because this guy's play style kind of irritated me not gonna lie I was a bit frustrated <laughs> um I feel like it's better to have Android 21 in with Little Bar because she requires less of it in order to excel than Trunks does. So it's not necessarily when I'm playing Trunks Anchor, it's like I want to be able to bring him in on my own terms. And this is a concept and like a train of thought I got from the Kill Stage because this was like the same thinking he had with like uh, playing Broly and Goku back in Season 2 when he played Team Gohan Broly Goku. It was like he wants to be able to bring in Super Saiyan Goku on his own terms. And like that that's something that, that kind of stuck with me and I could forgot about it for a while. but. Yeah, long story short, Trunks does better with the meter. It's like if I can DHC him in or tag him in after a kill or whatever, and I have like two bars or more, then bet I'll play him as if he's my man and I'll bring him into the team or bring him onto the field. But if I have little bar or little to no bar, then it's like I, I feel more comfortable with having 21 out. That being said though, we take things 2-0 over Optimus Prime, proceed on the loser's bracket, and I'll be back in the next video with more of this run, and of course with more rank matches as well, copycat challenge as well, and maybe a couple of other things that I have on the horizon, so stay tuned. Can't thank you guys enough, by the way, for all the support. Glad to be back. Glad to be back on the grind. Having a lot of fun as always. Feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, motivated, and we're gonna get back to this bag. You feel me? <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Hit this with a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. So you can stay tuned for all of the content that I bring you. With all that being said, this French off today. And remember, nothing can happen to you. Swing the bat. Later.